Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode we're getting started right away with an Aldebaran Red with a NavSat payload. We have to fulfill this contract, 60 units of NavSat payload uh, to an orbit, let's say roughly 900 kilometers circular inclination between 64 and 70. So we're going north basically. Uh, well, I, I choose to go north most of the time and uh, then it just needs to be in a stable orbit so it's not actually checking the eccentricity or anything but yep uh, throttle up SAS on and we're probably going to aim for a heading of 70 degrees Whoa. Um, 70 degrees initially uh, you know actually probably 65 will do the trick and uh, yeah okay two of the LR-89s and ignition and launch so yeah uh, we've got this contract we've got the geosync satellite contract oh geostationary satellite contract I should say and then we also have uh, the three lunar contracts impactor uh, flyby and orbiter not in that order and as far as grinds go, I know some people talked about the sounding rockets grind. I'm sort of glad I skipped that. And I'll just do the lunar rocket grind, if you don't mind. I know I'm a little bit late on things, this being 1963. But maybe by doing a whole lot of lunar missions, I can catch up somehow. There we go. That's uh, 900 kilometers, roughly speaking. Uh, good enough for a start. Inclination's not so good. I've made a huge mistake. I was supposed to go 30 degrees, not 65. Oh, shucks. Uh, my mistake. I thought about it the wrong way around. It was supposed to be 30 degrees, not 65 degrees. Mm. Well, we'll see. I think at this point, we probably should just go straight north to correct this. It's quite a dog leg, but... Let's see, once we reach our peak, what kind of velocity we have. We seem to have 5,500 meters per second here. Orbital velocity at 900 kilometers is not as fast as closer to the surface. Okay, well, let's see how it goes. Throttling up. Making sure it's settled. Yes, ignition. Uh, <laughs> the verniers always fail on this. It's interesting. The verniers basically uh, cushion the whole thing so that we we don't have an overall failure. That's the secret to verniers. That's what they do. And they actually have nothing to do with steering the rocket at all. They're just supposed to deal with test flight. Atlas verniers aren't useful for that because they're a separate part. Making it the same part is a uh, key innovation of the Soviet engines. We've got an orbit. But we're not quite at the right inclination. But we do still have the hydrazine. Can it correct 4 degrees of inclination? Well, actually 3, right? It said 64 and 70. Everything else is fine. If only I'd launched to the right uh, launch azimuth in the first place, it'd been easy. Uh, it'll be best to do this at the equator. Uh, we're right at the equator. Uh, node me, actually. Mm, we should have started earlier. We're actually quite a ways away from the equator right now. But since I don't have any connection, I'll be the fact that I can't really shut shut it down. Probably we're gonna have to relaunch this. This is pretty darn close. And I don't mind getting some extra data points on this engine. Oh, where are you? There you are. Yeah. Eventually it's gonna try and shut down the main thing after all. Really close. Oh, now we have connection. I don't suppose it's willing to take... No, it's not. <laughs> when it says between 64 and 70, it means it. Um, do you suppose... Well, 
Yeah, I mean, I could try and decouple it and see if that satisfies the thing. No, there's no decoupling force at all. Shocking. Such a lack of decoupling force. Okay, well, this is a dud. And that's just because I didn't go into the correct launch azimuth initially. Got it all backwards. Okay, I'll queue up another one of these. It worked out pretty well otherwise. Okay, next up is Lunar Atlas V. Once again, trying for the Lunar Trifecta as it did before. Except, of course, we're going to get more funds for it. So, might as well. And, of course, I've queued up another one of the Aldebaran Reds so that we can try that again. But first this. Uh, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Okay. We're past the speed of sound. And head through max Q. Oh, we've lost an... Ah. Uh, I'll wait for a lot. Oh no, attempt to separate the boosters um, resulted in the loss of the LR-105. Well, hmm. No, oh, anyway. Can it catch itself? How about those verniers, huh? At least we can get some data points on this stage. One, you can do it. You can't get to orbit, but <laughs> at least we can burn through and get the data points. All right, it is done, and there's not much else we can do. This little guy can't do anything useful, really, at this point. Oh, I think I fixed the um, the panels. Here we go. So that was my fault uh, that we didn't have a deploy solar panel option. That was because I forgot to add BD Armory. What the heck is this? Is this supposed to have that? Anyway, um, yeah, uh, BD Armory. Uh, sorry, BD Animations module, not Armory. Just the animations module is something that Raider Nix mods rely on. And ironically, so do mine. So it's sort of weird that I forgot to add it in, but it's true. So that's why we didn't have the animation before. But now we do. I've got it in now. So that'll fix not only this, but all of his uh, mods uh, would have had the problem with that. As would mine if I chose to add them in. But mine are not RP1, uh, RP1 compatible. I... Don't know exactly what pricing would make them RP1 compatible. Who knows? Anyway, a shame that the first time we got to deploy this is on a failed mission, but... Well, we're just gonna build another one. Good thing it only takes a month to build an Atlas these days. And no luck. Alright, we'll have to queue up another one of those. Data units. We need more data units. Still, it's interesting to note that the faster we build our rockets, the more we're paying for the pad through the rollout costs, right? The rollout costs seem to build in some, some costs of the facilities, but we're basically paying more for the facilities if we build rockets faster. So, yeah, well, that's the downside, but whatever. Uh, our rockets just cost more, I guess, is the thing. And we'll just assume that we have to build in that cost into the base price of the rocket. So anyway, Aldebaran Red is next with another attempt at that Navsat. And I'll move up this Lunar Atlas V because the geostationary satellite contract is two years on it rather than just one year, so we can wait on that. Okay, here we go again with this, but this time I'm going to initially go to the right heading. Um, I think 35 will do. Okay, ignition. Launch. That's vigorous. Though we do want to go fairly steep, so...
Okay, just above 800 kilometers, and we need it between 800 and 1,000 kilometers, so that'll do sort of, but I would have liked a little bit more margin there. Anyway, uh, separation. And checking, and ignition. Well, this time the verniers did not get bust. We're making progress. Okay, 889 by 809, 64 degree inclination, that good enough for you? Yep, it's counting down, just have to wait the two minutes. Alright, orbit confirmed, that's done. Let's see if we can deorbit it with the RCS, I don't know. It's tough to say, this can't uh, reignite. If we could dump the kerosene and oxygen, it'd be easier. We didn't get much of a reward for the contract, but hey, it wasn't that hard. Okay, yeah, that should dispose of it. Let's verify. Okay, the engine's gone. Looking good for disposal. All right, it's all gone. Uh, let's try that Lunar Atlas V again. Well, I feel like we can celebrate that success by getting a few extra upgrade points. Let's bump this up to 1.5 and the R&D. Hmm, can we get to 1.75 maybe? There we go. All right, so that's a little celebration. Lunar Atlas V next. Okay, here we go with Lunar Atlas V again. Throttle up, SAS is on. There we go. Ignition. And launch. And you can see we've lined up with the moon again. Looks like it's uh, getting later and, later and later at night, so it might be a while before we get a daylight launch for the moon. Then again, given the time it takes to build rockets, Maybe it won't be that long. Okay, going through max Q again. Taking a look at our data units, we're maxed out on the LR-89 actually. I suppose if we want to get more reliability, we'll have to get an uh, upgraded version of the LR-89. Hopefully the upgraded versions are more reliable. The center engine is still technically an LR-43 instead of uh, LR-105. We haven't gotten the upgrade for it, but it's been so... Oh, I'm gonna jinx it now. It's been so reliable, I mean, it's rated for only five and a half minutes, and every time we basically push it to six and a half minutes. Yeah, I probably just jinxed it. There's, uh, it's gonna quit on us this time. Okay, booster engine set. And here we go. Once again, we're trying to get six minutes and six and a half minutes out of this engine. We'll see. Okay, yeah, I want to dump the fairings now. All good. I mean, there's a lot of Delta V packed into just the very end of the burn for this engine. Like, the last 20 seconds is a thousand meters per second of Delta V, but, uh, looking good. Okay, whoa, I overdid it. Darn it. Bad timing. I'm getting old. Bad reaction times. Okay. Uh, separation. Okay, well, hopefully our periapsis is... No, not really. <laughs> I was gonna say, hopefully our periapsis is uh, where we're burning out of, but it's not. Oh, well. But we can sort of go from our descending node here. Not that that matters. We don't have much of a relative incline... Okay, stop trying to select other things. Uh, much of a relative inclination to the moon. We only have a quarter of a degree. 
So it's not like we need an off-plane transfer or anything. We'll fine-tune it when we do the burn. Now it's just 3,128.5 meters per second. And we have uh, 3,600, so no problems. Now let's finally deploy the solar panels on this, huh? Okay, that's ready to go. Throttling up. And engage. Okay, everything is lit. There goes the Atlas booster. Right, well, here's the thing that's gonna require even better reaction times because of the sheer thrust to weight ratio of this stage. Oh, way too early. Now, well, getting old. Well, it's actually just later at night than I usually want to record, but one excuse is as good as another. Well, okay. Uh, we've got a double encounter with the moon. Okay, I'll take that. All right. Well, we are recharging, and we're not even pointed at the sun properly. We'll keep an eye on it, but we'll keep this stage for now and its controller so that we could potentially use its hydrazine for a little bit longer. Okay, we are in the Lunar SOI. And let's just double check that there's no catches. Just need to fly by the moon within 5,000 kilometers and collect science at that level. Make orbit uh, between 20 kilometers and 5,000 kilometers, same deal and collect science and then impact the moon. Mustn't forget to collect science at both, both those stages, but otherwise, it is still recharging with its current orientation. There's the moon. Well, let's get the flyby contract done by getting some science. Let's see, analyze telemetry. Nothing new. Can we get something new? I don't think they, any of them are, but let's see. In that case, we'll just send back our telemetry. So we got the lunar flyby one done. Okay, throttle up. We'll use up this hydrazine, which is currently in this tank. We don't need to decouple that. Okay, separation. Gotta remember signal delay. We have captured. Well, again, to a fairly low orbit so that we get the space just above the biomes at every opportunity. But we do have to preserve the ability to crash into the moon. So we'll stop it right there. Okay, well, let me just keep this up. There's nothing new right now, I don't think. Yeah. Okay, well, let's see if we happen to hit something new. Nubium. Mare Nubium. Well, I wish we were low over it. Right now, we're not going to get anything new, I don't think. But I don't think we've passed low over Mare Nubium before. So basically, we want the low over science here. We could just crash into it and get it that way. I think that might be for the best. So, but we need to make sure. Oh, wait, Lunar Orbiter, it's fine with. I thought we had to send some more science, but I guess it's okay. Well, all right, then we'll try and impact the moon at Mare Nubium in order to get the low over science there. And then we are done with this one and we can spend our money finally. The line is going in the wrong direction. Actually, the communication line is supposed to be going this way. So Mare Nubium will still be in communication with, uh, with the Earth. That is important. I wonder if Mechjeb can verify that I'm going to crash into the right biome. 
There we go, Mare Nubium. Just above Mare Nubium, all right. New science? New science, excellent. Okay, well, I think we've done all that, and we're not going to hit any other biomes. All right, all done. The trifecta has worked out again, and let's go back to Space Center and reap the rewards. We're up to 2.1 million now, and we only have one contract left to do, so it should be good. We have 600 days to figure out how to put a satellite into geostationary orbit. That's tough. That's the toughest of the contracts. Uh, it takes the most Delta V to do that. So, yeah. But anyway, uh, looking good. We have enough time, and we can increase our build speed to make sure it happens. I'm, I'm not confident that the one that we've got queued up right now will take care of it. So we'll have to see. But anyway, let's get some research queued up. I think it's uh, finally time to get some pods. Oh, wait, we have to wait for the building to upgrade. Right. That's annoying. But how long is that going to take? We certainly should save the science so that we can get pods. Um, 98 days right now. And let me purchase one, two, three, four. And first get two more VAB points. That sped it up. Okay. Okay, let's get to two build points per second. Okay, and I'm aware that uh, if we want the second build slot, we have to upgrade the VAB, which I didn't have to actually click on. But upgrading the VAB costs a million bucks, so which we do have. So maybe I want to spend that, but maybe I don't. I haven't decided yet. I'd like to finish the R&D first. How about we get it to 2.5? I mean, 0.25, I mean. Mm, that's close enough. So I'm retaining enough maybe to do this upgrade. I'll see about that. But let's not jump the gun. Okay, so let's try out this Geosat. We'll see if that works. And then, I'll, if not, I'll make adjustments and we'll be starting on that next time. But if it does work out, we could try out these... I don't know, that doesn't seem like it's worthwhile. Though, eventually they might, if we keep doing them, maybe they'll give me something that's actually worth it. Lunar landing, though. That, that sounds like a real challenge. That sounds like a real challenge. Reach orbital speed and return safely. Well, we need the capsules for that. Oh no, it is uncrewed, actually. Hmm. That doesn't seem too bad. Do we have heat shields yet? Yeah, we have uh, Leo rated heat shields. We'll have to see which one I really want based on what probe I send up. We should probably get some good science out of it. We may be ambitious with this since we're basically either going to launch it on the Aldebaran rocket or the Atlas. Either of them can handle, you know, a reasonably sized payload. So yeah, uh, we'll do the first attempt at the geosat we'll definitely do this one in the next episode and we may have to try the geosat again let's see all right so what we need to do is get into geostationary orbit which means that we do have to get to an inclination of zero degrees and roughly circular orbit i hope it's not this tight i'm sure there's some leeway but uh yep it's going to be tricky Let's take a look at our stages to manage this. We've got the RD0105 stage with 2,489 to boost up to the required apoapsis and then to circularize the one kilonewton thruster with 1,645 meters per second. Uh, oh, I've got a supplementary avionics unit. I put the Pioneer 5 in order to give it uh, enough communication range to act as a good relay antenna since we're putting it in an ideal location. And uh, we've got the probe core, the avionics here to actually handle the avionics. So there we go. Okay, and now we can deploy the solar panels too. So good time, let's throttle up, SAS on, and ignition. And launch. 
we don't really have to put it over any particular location. Not this time anyway. I'm not gonna be aiming to put it above Cape Canaveral or something. Getting it to the required orbit will be fine enough. We got clouds today. Okay, getting ready for a booster separation. There's something up with this fairing piece, but this is what we've got tooled, but shading does not seem right at all. But it's the one we've got tooled, so we're gonna have to stick with it. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. Shut down 230 by 167. Very good. Separation. RCS. Okay. And fairings. And let's get the solar panels out. And we are recharging. Okay. Well, we just wait until we're above the equator. And then we'll begin this part of the deal. And at the equator, we'll do as much as we can to correct the inclination since, you know, we only have one ignition. So we should use all the delta V we can. Okay, well, that's how much delta V it says we have in the stage. If there's any inaccuracy, we can always use the RCS to make a minor correction. And... What did I want to check? Oh yes, how much exactly are we putting into... Uh, not much on the normal part, it's pretty much all going into prograde. So not much inclination correction going on here, which makes sense. I mean, it's mostly to be done at apoapsis. I hope our one kilonewton thruster stage can handle making the rest of the inclination correction, we'll see. I've put the node more or less over Libreville, which I believe is on the equator, and there's this Libreville here. Now the stage is like only a minute, 55 seconds really. Okay. And ignition. Okay, it has ignited. Okay, well, that's pretty much the mark right there. Uh, they wanted uh, 35,793. We've got 35,860. Okay, well, uh, we're recharging, so we might as well bring this hydrazine along for now at least. At Apoapsis, what we need to do is, well, it's not quite at Apoapsis. It looks like we want to be past Apoapsis. 1764. We've got 1645, not including the little RCS that we have, but that's not much. Yeah, just a little bit shy. You'll note the interesting configuration of the one kilonewton thruster stage. It's got the controller here and then the extra fuel tanks here. This is the ComSat payload. Well, it's helping out, but it's probably not going to do the trick. Okay, and what's this one? I don't need that to happen. Right, set. And it's an 8 minute burn with this engine. i got to shade towards prograde. On the off chance that we can get a good periapsis. Whoa, that didn't work, right? And maybe the inclination will have some tolerance. Oh darn, it's wiggling all over the place. Oh, just stay there. Ah, uh, 
It was lopsided, and we we're out, and it's not quite the right orbit. We had a bit of bit of wiggling late in the game, and the RCS took some of the delta v. So, well, as expected, this first attempt was not going to work quite right. I need to pack at least a hundred meters per second more somehow. Maybe if we can upgrade some of the engines, because we just unlocked a 1959 orbital rocketry, I think. <laughs> so maybe that'll help. I don't know if it allows us to get a new level on the hydrazine thrusters. That would be nice. I'll have to check that. If we could just get a little bit more ISP out of this hydrazine thruster, that'd do the trick. So, yeah, we'll have to try this again next time. We will have to try the recovery of something from space and maybe take a look at lunar landings. So lots to do. And thank you for watching this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.